We get the question all the time, do I need a tow car? Now, while we can't tell you exactly whether or not you need a tow car, what we can tell you is why we have one and why we love it. Yes. Deciding whether you need a tow car or not is all about figuring out how you're going to travel, where you're going to travel, how often you're going to travel, and what size of RV you're traveling in. For example, if you have a van size RV or a van conversion, then maybe you don't need a tow car, and most likely you don't. Yeah, I think if we had a van sized RV, I don't think we would have a tow car. I wouldn't no. think we would need one. No, we have friends with a Class C that literally park as close to the middle of the city as possible mm -hmm. and stay in an RV park that's right there and they bike or walk everywhere. And or use public transportation yeah. and that works for them works and it for them. they've been on the road for a couple of years. So I think it's different strokes, different folks. Definitely. And if you actually have just planned on traveling a couple of weeks out of the year or maybe a, you know, a month out of the year, then you know, investing in the tow bar setup and all that other stuff that comes along with the tow car might not be necessary. Absolutely. But for us, we have a 33 foot coach. Class and, A. Yeah, motor Class home. A motorhome. And we definitely love our tow car for lots of reasons. Lots of reasons. Yeah. When we roll into a town or a national park or a wild camping spot, we like to do what we call base camp. Our RV is our home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we like to set it up, get out our chairs, get out the table, leave the espresso maker out. Bust out the bicycles. Inflate, inflate the, the paddleboard. The sup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, have out all of our toys so that we're ready to go and we feel like we're living at home and not consistently on the go every single day. Yes. We like to explore a lot when we get to an area, whether it's hiking or inside of a city, and there, I just can't imagine doing what we do without our car. Yes. Because parking in the middle of San Francisco or give me another big city. Uh, traffic in San Francisco or Seattle or Los Angeles. Chicago even. Yes. I mean, getting a good parking spot anywhere within the vicinity of what you're wanting to explore, whether that's a coffee shop, a museum, whatever the restaurant. case may be. Yeah, a restaurant there may not be RV parking right there. It may just be metered small parking, not really made for big yeah. rigs. And a lot of small towns that we visit, actually they have signs up that say no RV parking mm -hmm. or no parking over if you're over eight feet. So it would be very limiting uh, to our exploration if we didn't have a tow car. Yeah, being able to get in and around and sure you can rely on public transportation sometimes, but not every city and especially not a lot of the small towns yeah. we like to visit have public transportation. Or especially national parks or state parks. You don't, there's no public transportation often. Yeah, exploring somewhere like Yellowstone or Yosemite, the sheer size of those parks yes. with nothing but our RV. Oh my gosh, yes. what a pain in the rear. That would be a pain. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, nature. Getting down to some of the hikes that we go to are down long, narrow dirt roads or... Maybe right off the highway and Low just, clearance. Oh yeah, low clearance, narrow roads, all that jazz. Yeah, so doing all of that without our car would be difficult and it would definitely hold us back. Yes. We wouldn't do near as much if, if we didn't have a tow car. We would just say, oh, well, that road's too small, we can't get down there. We just won't go on that hike. A tow car just makes exploring a lot more simple and the way we do it with the base camp and everything it's it's perfect we have our home and we have our car yep another reason we really like our tow car that was a bug <laughs> is the convenience factor if we are parked and have our base camp then we need to go to the grocery store we can stock up we can load up the car which is difficult to do on public transportation or, or on a bicycle a uh, unless you have like a baby cart that you can you know, <laughs> throw all your stuff in in the back. Same goes for laundry. Oh you know, my gosh, yeah. Most people don't think about, well, when you don't have laundry facility at your campground, well, you got to drive it into town, which could be five, 10 miles into town, and you're going to bike a, a giant sack of laundry. Into town or, yeah. or want to get on a, a public bus with that? Probably not. Granted, we have a washer dryer in ours, the combo, which we love, but you may not, and I know not every RVer does, they don't always want to give up the space. So that would be a big convenience factor to keep in mind. Yes. Aside from weather 
Weather, oh yeah, I mean, what if it's snowing? What if it's 110 degrees outside or raining? Raining, cats and dogs. You don't yes. want to ride your bike in that. You definitely don't want to have to stand outside and wait for a bus. You don't really want to walk. So in cases like that, sure, can you get by? Absolutely. But having your own car is really nice. It's really nice, nice especially yeah. when this is your home and you're a full-time traveler. It just makes life simpler. Absolutely. Rental cars are an option if you don't want to tow a car but there's still a lot of convenience factor to keep in mind. How long does it take you to book that rental car? Is there even a rental car location near where you're headed or are you gonna have to rent one a couple of hours away and then drive it back there when you're done using that rental car? So there's definitely some things to keep in mind. This is an argument we've heard from a lot of, of new full timers and we actually have friends that, that did that. They rented for an entire year uh, they could tell you all about how horrible it was, you know, going to a national park out in the middle of nowhere and having to rent a car three hours away mm -hmm. and then drive separately so they could have a tow car to explore a national park. You know, it's, it's those kinds of conveniences that are... They make a difference. Yeah, yeah. it's actually our friends uh, Jen and Dee's of Neely's on Wheels and they did their first year without a tow car and they have a big class A RV and they very quickly got themselves a tow car for, for year, year two. two. <laughs> <laughs> so if that doesn't say it, that sums it up for us. <laughs> you can look up there and take on it for sure. How's it going? So let's talk usage. Mm -hmm. Do we really use our car? Yes. yes. A lot. A lot. Way more than actually we ever thought we would use yeah. it. In fact, when I ran the numbers after the first couple years, we use our car as much, if not more, than our RV. Yeah, absolutely. We have typically either the same amount of miles or slightly more on the tow car than what we end up with on the RV. So that tells you how much exploring we're doing, driving around the country and driving through national parks, state parks in the city. So we use the holy Jesus out yeah. of our car. It's just crazy because you think, well, I'm driving the RV all across the U.S but it's those little trips from town A to town B and C and D and E and everything that just adds up. It's, yeah. it's wild. Yeah. Absolutely. Jason does some funny math when he runs our numbers for our miles per gallon. And lots of people think it's good. Others think it's bad, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He adds the miles per gallon we get on the RV with the miles per gallon we get on the car and comes up with an average, and that's our average miles per gallon. Yeah, so our RV gets really good fuel economy. Yeah, we get like 20 miles to the gallon. Yeah, exactly. It boils down to the RV getting, you know, the new RV that we have gets like seven miles to the gallon. It's painful. Boof. But the smart car gets about 40. Yay. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> every mile we drive in this thing, we are thankful yes. that we have it. Definitely. And, uh, well, and when you oh, add that up yeah. at the end of the year, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of miles getting 40 miles per gallon versus the seven. So it definitely makes a difference and money. It makes money. a difference money wise. Yeah. What we would spend driving 300 miles in a week on a car versus 300 versus miles. RV. Ooh, big yeah. difference. There. Oh yeah. And you know, you're never going to make your money back with all the you know stuff you're adding onto your tow car. but. If you do it for five years and use the same tow car and the same tow setup, then mm -hmm. hey, maybe you will. I'm, I'm going to guess we probably have. <laughs> it's just a guess though. So there you have it. You've got a lot of the reasons we like our tow car, how we use our tow car, and what we think the biggest benefits of it are. Yeah, if you have a tow car, if you don't have a tow car, if you have your own opinion on the, the situation altogether, share in the comments yeah. below because people love to know what works for everybody. It, it just helps, it just helps, especially the people that are new to RVing. It helps them decide whether or not they want to invest. Absolutely. I mean, because I know a lot of you out there, you've got um, a new RV you've just bought, you've never really been RVing before, and you're only going to be part time. You're just, you know, the weekend warrior. So it's, do you really invest in that setup? It's a tough, Tough choice. So hopefully knowing our take on it and how we use ours and Yeah. In case we lost you through that whole thing, yeah. the answer is yes. <laughs> if you're in a bigger RV, yes, you can and should. No, I can't say should. We would recommend as friends, please save yourself the hassle. Get a tow car. Yes. But if you're in a smaller RV, then you've definitely got a debate on your hands because maybe yeah. you don't need one. 
maybe you do. Yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> See <laughs> you on fun. the road. Let's go somewhere.